Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash pro revenge. This story was posted by user Coffee and Insomnia. Don't stick to our agreement? You shouldn't have been stepping out. Here we go, strap in for a long one kids. This is a story from long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. And by that I mean it happened three years ago at a pizza place I used to work. I was a delivery driver for six years at various pizza places picking up and moving on to greener pastures whenever it suited me. Granted, that only happened a couple of times because I am unfortunately a very loyal employee. To be honest, I should have done that before this whole thing ever happened. The store I was at was part of a nationwide franchise and the waters had gotten choppy. All of the managers quit at once and they couldn't seem to get one to stick around. It got so bad that the area manager had to come in acting as general manager and brought a manager from another store with him. These two are the main characters of this story, well, besides me obviously. For the purpose of this story, we'll call them Jeff and Kate, and I'll just be me. Jeff was 45 and had been with the company for a long time before I started, working himself up from the position of driver all the way to being the one to oversee about 20 stores. He was actually married to another area manager. I got along okay with Jeff for the most part. On the other hand, Kate and I got on like a house on fire, both being ladies of a similar age, she often confided things in me, and that would soon bite her in the ass, figuratively. I considered myself a decent employee as far as pizza slingers go, come to work on time, did all the dishes, got along with everyone, and had the best delivery times. Because of this, I usually landed all the best shifts, including opening on Saturdays. If you've never worked a tip job, you know that shift is most coveted out there. Working through both the lunch and dinner rush before going home is well worth having to get up earlier. That information is relevant to the story, trust me. You see, there are always two drivers who do that shift. One comes in earlier and leaves earlier, and I was the one who got to come in just before we flipped on the open sign and went home once dinner rush began to die down. This is also relevant. The final bit of info you need for context is that my brother goes a bit wild at Christmas. His favourite thing to do is book an entire movie theatre for everyone he knows to see a movie of his choice. This particular year was when The Last Jedi came out and he is a Star Wars fanatic, so that was what we were going to see. Unfortunately, it would be at 6pm on a Saturday, at least two hours before I would get off. At this point, Jeff and Kate had been with us for three months without managing to find suitable replacements and I made an arrangement with the other opening driver to switch shifts because his ended right when I would need to leave to make the movie. I then cleared it with Jeff and he agreed to let me go at 5.30. It was all set, or so I thought. You see, that Saturday we started busy, very busy. So busy that at 5.30 when I went to hand Jeff my slips, he had already dispatched me on a double delivery. I took them, but reminded him that I needed to leave when I got back. I just hoped the trailers were long enough that I didn't miss much of the beginning of the movie. I got back from my double and by that point it was already six and the theatre was 20 minutes away. I had to leave. Once again I went to hand my slips to Jeff, but he got in my face. You leave when I say you can leave, he told me. You're not going to let me, I asked incredulously that he was reneging on our deal. I came in early. I did my time, damn it! He looked so very smug. No. Well, I made a decision right then and there. There were so many pizza jobs out there that they needed me more than I needed them. I took my slip book, you know, the kind that you see in restaurants. I find them great for delivery because not only can you store all your slips in them, but they're hard enough for customers to bear down on to sign. Anyway, I slapped that in his hand and said, Fine then. I quit. It was his turn to look incredulous. After making sure I meant it, he checked me out and I left the store fuming. I missed the entire opening of my movie. But the story doesn't end there. Oh no, you remember how I said Kate would confide in me? She loved to tell me about how often she and Jeff would meet at a hotel after work. She even horrified me by telling me Jeff would turn off the cameras so they could have sex in the back office when the store was empty in a chair I had sat in multiple times. Kate was even so obliging to give insignificant details like the date and time this happened. So I put in an anonymous call to the franchise's HR and told them what to look for when it came to checking the tapes. I told them everything Kate had told me, but I still wasn't content with leaving it there. 
So I went to my local pizza place that just happened to be in Jeff's wife's area. Remember when I said she was also an area manager? And I got to gossiping with the workers while they made my pizza. I was well aware it would make it back to her. Food employees can't keep such juicy gossip to themselves. Jeff got demoted to store manager, then transferred to the same store in his wife's area I went to so she could keep an eye on him. I guess it didn't work out because last I heard, Jeff's wife divorced him and he no longer works for that franchise. And none of that would have happened if he'd just let me leave on time. Down in the comments, Kitnado says, what cheats around comes around. That was definitely pro revenge, although it does seem a bit excessive. You miss a movie and he loses everything. He was trash though, so I guess I have very little sympathy. Next up, we're going to play a game using r slash drunk or kid. This subreddit is for stories of the greatest stupidity. Inspired by How I Met Your Mother, this subreddit was created for the purposes of hearing amusing stories and having others to try to guess if you were drunk or a kid. User Pakva posted this. I tripped on a flat ground, didn't even try to put hands in front of me to not hurt myself and fell on my face. So what do you guys think? Is this drunk or a kid? My guess was that it has to be a drunk because I'm sure a kid would try to break their fall with their hands. Find out after this next story, posted by Pyro Paladin. Funeral insurance company gets a visit from a client. Let me preface this story by saying that I saw a post on here recently about a woman who got revenge on a bank by maxing out a credit card in her deceased husband's name and not paying for it. This reminded me of an incident that occurred around this time last year that, while not on the same monetary scale, delivered shock value far greater than money and became a nationwide story. All names have been changed. So this takes place in South Africa and there is an insurance and investment company that we will call Green Grubber that is notorious for not paying out funeral policies. One such victim, let's call her Precious, was being given the runaround by Green Grubber. Her uncle Obed had been badly beaten at a shebeen, an illegal bar, and in his injured state managed to walk to the police station to report the incident. At the police station he had a seizure and they thought he was a mental patient and did nothing. A farmer had pity on Obed and took him to the local government hospital. Obed waited outside in the pouring rain as no one was available to attend his wounds. Finally, he was admitted into the casualty ward whereby he succumbed to his injuries. Obed had a funeral policy with Green Grubber, paid for by his niece. Precious who was unemployed and relied on government grants. The monthly premiums of $14.17 were up to date and had never been in arrears. However, when it came time for her claim on the policy, she was given no end of uphill. She had been to their offices numerous times, only to be turned away with the excuse that it was still under assessment. And living on a rural farmstead, it's neither cheap nor easy to travel to the city, 52 miles away, having to take a minimum of four minibus taxis for a round trip. In addition, the morgue where the body was being kept wanted the body removed quickly and were charging storage per day and those costs were adding up. Being unable to afford a lawyer, not being savvy on how to navigate the legal system on her own, she took matters into her own hands and did something that has worked since time immemorial. Public shaming. Precious removed her uncle's corpse from the morgue who released it no questions asked, glad to finally be rid of the body. Precious then hired a vehicle and had the body transported to the Green Grubber offices, hauled the body out of the vehicle and left it in the centre of the building for all to see. Precious then started talking loudly, explaining her experience with Green Grubber to everyone with an earshot. The Green Grubber staff were naturally spooked and after 30 minutes the assessment that had been pending suddenly concluded and the claim was approved. Precious left the body at the Green Grubber offices and went to the bank to ensure the funds had been deposited before returning and collecting the body. In addition, Green Grubber was made to pay for Zulu traditional rituals required to remove the deceased spirit from the premises and apologise for extreme treatment before being laid to rest. Respect towards elders and ancestors are a cornerstone in Zulu culture and rituals also require slaughter of cattle and other animals which can end up being very expensive. Too long didn't read, zombie apocalypse in South Africa thwarted by funeral insurance clerk. That is one of the craziest things I've ever heard. Glad the lady got what she and her uncle deserved in the end. Shame she had to go through all that though. 
I've included links from the news story and videos of the lady removing the body from the insurance offices in the details of the video. Okay, back to Drunk on a Kid. What did you guys think? It was... A kid. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.